world. Welcome back to World Crisis Radio. Webster Tarpa here in Washington, D.C. Now in our second hour, got some more important foreign policy stuff uh, concerning Syria, right? The Free Syrian Army, the united front of all the death squads commanded by the al-Qaeda butcher Belhaj from his base in Iskandarun, Turkey continues its killing spree, and the international media, especially the uh, U.S. network this week, have uh, get, given it another go. Uh, any killing in uh, in Syria, anybody who gets killed is uh, killed by Assad, even though they're forced more and more to admit the presence of armed death squads by uh, the Free Syrian Army, the uh, self-defense, as they say. And they, they're even claiming that this is beginning to carve out some enclaves uh, although this is extremely dubious, don't believe it. Um, Arab League observers have been there. Will they continue to stay there? Uh, the Emir of Doha, the the Thani family, these reactionary feudal monsters. No doubt, he wants an invasion. The boss of Qatar, the boss of Al Jazeera, wants an invasion. Maybe they can restore monarchy in Syria. Or maybe he can put one of his. Uh, his his uh, relatives on the throne <laughs> in Syria. Uh, Syria, of course, being a socialist Arab republic of a rather advanced type for that part of the world. Um, we're getting reports uh, unconfirmed. Iran is helping Syria with uh, oil uh, trading, I guess buying some of the Syrian oil that uh, the, the Europeans, these fools, have uh, rejected. The Russians, above all, have repeated their veto intention in the U.N. Security Council. This was Lavrov once again, and quite firm. This looks like it's holding up. There are also reports that Russian warships or Russian freighters have deposited 60 tons of military supplies. 60 tons is good, but that, what is that? That's one, one or two tanks at most. Um, maybe there are other things that are that are lighter, right? The big issue there would be surface-to-air missile defenses to rule out the air pirates, the air bandits of NATO from bombing another defenseless country. That's, I guess, the, the rule is the law of the jungle, international anarchy. If you don't have sufficient air defense, then you are uh, essentially on your way to being bombed to smithereens. Today, we have Sarkozy posturing, I believe, for internal political uh, purposes, trying to get his wretched poll numbers up, right? He's 20 points behind François Hollande and would normally be the loser in a parliamentary system, but maybe in the presidential system he can do it. But he's appealing to the French chauvinists, the followers of Marine Le Pen in the first round, where he could Sarkozy could get knocked out uh, in March. Um, he's posturing for uh, election purposes. How long can we tolerate these things going on in Syria. So uh, the situation continues. Uh, I'm not sure it was a good idea to let all of these terrorists out of jail. I hope they were carefully screened. But uh, there it is. Um, as long as the international support holds up, the uh, Anglo-Americans are blocked, at least at the moment. So it's a matter of Iran and China and Russia. Now, on the economic, international economic front, it was, of course, one week ago today that we had this massive assault by Standard & Poor's against Europe. And you remember it is that uh, France and Austria were downgraded one notch, and then we also had uh, Italy, Spain, Portugal, and Cyprus going down by two notches, notches on their idiotic system, and uh, Malta, Slovakia, and Slovenia downgraded by one notch. Now, a couple of days later, something even, well, maybe even bigger, Standard & Poor's has downgraded the European Financial Stability Fund, or European Financial Stability Facility, I think as they, they call it now. This is the bailout fund, right? This is the Euro TARP. Um, nothing that I'm in favor of, but you can see what the attack is. This is economic warfare. This is not a technical judgment. This is not an economic opinion. It's not an analysis. You can look at this guy, John Chambers, who runs Standard & Poor's. I put out a tweet this week 
that in 1944, the Nazi commandant of Paris was General von Stuttnagel, and uh, today the commandant of Paris is John Chambers, because when John Chambers snaps his fingers with his liberal arts degree and his background in English literature, if he says, you're not creditworthy, then the Elysee Palace and the uh, Palace of Matignon, they tremble, right? The whole French government trembles when Chambers of Standard & Poor's snaps his fingers. Sarkozy and Fillon and Barouin are valets of John Chambers of the Standard & Poor's. Quelle honte, quelle honte, quelle honte. What a shame. What a degradation. What a humiliation. I'm sure General de Gaulle, if he had, de Gaulle had been in command, a lot of those Standard & Poor's guys would be in jail. They would be contemplating the world from La Santé prison or maybe Devil's Island if they still have that. Right? Some horrible place of incarceration would be their fate. Right? General de Gaulle, of course, who sent troops to the Monaco border to wipe out a tax shelter. Uh, so we see the degradation of the modern state. The modern state trembles before the actions of a group of, of uh, adventurers and uh, speculators, insider traders, and God knows what. So um, unless and until European leaders come forward who are capable and willing to defend themselves, this is going to get worse and worse. Now, Greece, we're told that Greece and Hungary are on the brink of default financial catastrophe. This is the reality behind the scenes. Um, the Greek haircut, right? Uh, the private bondholders, not the central banks and not the institutional bondholders, but the private bondholders of Greece, it's a couple of hundred um, million uh, euros, not that much, uh, not that much, in, in, and I don't mean in Romney's terms, I mean in the, in the terms of these, these events. Uh, they're supposed to take a 50% write-down, cut 50% off the bonded debt so that the Greeks can now face their next, uh, their next rollover. And it, this, may not, this may not happen. And of course, if the bondholders don't agree, that will trigger a forced bankruptcy, that will be a default, and that will then trigger the credit default swaps. Uh, remember that in 2008, it was the credit default swaps, primarily those sold by the AIG London branch, that took the U.S. derivatives panic and made that a worldwide panic. So that's going to happen again if Greece goes over the edge. Now, the European Union, European Central Bank are demanding more and more killer austerity. The Germans, again, they have, they have remembered the 1923 hyperinflation. Hyperinflation is not the worst. Hyperdeflation is worse than hyperinflation. And the hyperdeflation in the case of Germany was the Brüning government. We've talked about it, 1930 to 1932. The hyperdeflationary austerity. This is what they're demanding from these other countries. And this is causing tremendous problems. But now we do have some rational voices from Germany. Let's focus on one of them. A Christian Democrat, this is the Merkel party, uh, Elmar Brock, B-R-O-K, he says that uh, the Standard & Poor's attack on the nine Eurozone countries is part of a currency war. I'm reading to you from the Macedonian International News Agency, M-I-N-A. He's talking to Die Welt. So Brock says that the S&P downgrade is a targeted attack on Europe by the American rating agency. There are no plausible grounds for the downgrade. Consequently, the S&P downgrade is a matter of interests, and in somebody's interest is being served, not that of Europe. They have declared a currency war on us. The United States is waging financial war on Europe. Yes. And then he goes on to say, quote, certain forces in the United States, in particular in the world of finance, it is evident that their one and only aim in this way is to promote Anglo-Saxon interests at the cost of Europe. They want to shatter the Eurozone in order to take money, to make money. Hallelujah. This is exactly it. This has been going on for about two and a half years at this point. We'll be back in a minute on World Crisis Radio.